All right, so welcome to the webinar today, everyone. My name is Ashley Ring, and I'm a customer advocate at OWL Practice. I'll be hosting this session today. The webinar will be approximately 30 minutes long with a question period at the end. There's a chat feature in GoToMeeting that you can use to type questions as we go. Tila and Safina, two of our customer advocates here at OWL, will be addressing any questions in the chat section live as we go. During the session, we'll review the basic features and functionality of OWL, giving you a comprehensive overview of how our service helps make the administrative side of running a private practice much easier. So let's get started. OWL Practice was founded in a Toronto psychologist's office by Andrew Sloss, our CEO, who manages the business side of his wife's private practice. He wanted to streamline the operations and tried looking for a program that could help, but he found there were no solutions that existed that were Canadian-based, included features suitable for the unique needs of mental health practitioners, and most importantly, that were P-HIPAA and college compliant. So he decided to build OWL. OWL practice is fully P-HIPAA and college compliant. When you start searching for a digital practice management tool, your first question should be, where are your servers located? Ours are located in Canada, specifically in Toronto and Montreal, so your information is always stored securely on Canadian soil. We take many other security measures to protect your data as well, including creating redundant backups of your data, creating a unique URL for each account that is not searchable from any search engine, and encrypting the information passed between our servers and your computer in a way very similar to mobile banking. If you have any other questions about security, I highly recommend that you look at our FAQ page by going to faq.owlpractice.ca. We have lots of articles that detail the exact security measures taken by OWL to protect your practice data. We're also excited to announce that we're offering the first month of OWL free to any of our webinar attendees today. So if you sign up before the end of the month, by June 1st, you can create a free trial account on our website. And if you do want to subscribe to a plan, just let us know and we'll offer that promotion. You can sign up for a free trial account by going to owlpractice.ca. You can also contact our customer advocacy team for more information by sending an email to support at owlpractice.ca. So now that you know our history and security, let's talk about what OWL Practice does that can help you manage your practice and how to use it. OWL is a web-based practice management tool. It is designed to be used by mental health professionals and private practice owners. It allows users to streamline their daily administrative operations and tasks. The major features of OWL that we're going to review today are scheduling, billing, note writing, client record management, and practice management. So let's get started. I'm just going to take you into the live demo portion of OWL now. So you should be able to see my calendar here. And when you first log into OWL, this is what you'll see, the calendar. It's the heart and soul of our platform. This is where you'll schedule appointments for your clients and set up your availability. So you can see here that we structure it to allow you different day views. So you can view by week, by day or month if needed. And you can also hide days from your calendar view if you want to optimize the space that's made uh, visible to you when looking at the calendar. So if your practice isn't open on Saturdays and Sundays, you can configure the view to just show you Monday through Friday, maximizing your calendar space. You'll notice too that you can also sync your calendar to a third party. So you can see here by clicking the sync option, you can sync it to Google Calendar or any other third party calendar type. Perhaps if you use iMail and you use that calendar, you can just authenticate and it'll sync the two over. You can also see that we allow you to structure your sessions by client facing sessions and personal sessions. So you'll see here in my calendar, all of my personal or all of my client sessions. And then if I click the personal filter here, you'll see any personal sessions that I've scheduled for myself, indicating I'm not available at that time and what the reason is. So it's really helpful for you to structure your day between clients and personal engagements that you need to attend. You can also see some basic client information 
based on the sessions booked in the calendar. So you'll see here all of these sessions have a banner at the top that tells me the status. And if I click on those sessions, I can see the details of that appointment. And then if, furthermore, if I click into the client, I can see what we call their client face sheet. So this will show me the amount owing, any credits on file, the attendance rating, lots of useful information about the client with a link to navigate right into their account from the calendar if needed. So we show a lot of good information right from the calendar view, which is helpful to have. When you're ready to schedule a client session, all you have to do is click on the date in the calendar and the create session window will open. You need two things to book a session, a client name and a service. So I'm gonna type my client name and it'll pre-populate my client from the list and then I'll choose a service from my service menu. So you'll see here, we're gonna schedule Benjamin for a CBT session. That session is pre-populated with a duration and the amount based on the setup of that service. But if I need to change those details at the time of booking, for instance, if we were to add more time to that session, you'll see that OWL has a sliding fee scale that lets you change the duration of a session and directly change the price in relation to the time added. So it's really easy to adjust your sessions as needed based on each client appointment. We can also create recurring series of sessions, so weekly, bi-weekly, if it's a regular standing appointment that the client will come in for, and we can add any comments to the session too that we may need to know internally from a high level. But again, really all you need is the client name and a service selected from those menus, and then you can click the Create Session button to save the session. And you'll see that session is put in the calendar and it doesn't yet have an attendance banner along the top because the next step would be to mark the attendance for the session. So OWL gives you several attendance options and you can see them when you click on the session listed here, what each of those items are. So you can see the attendance options here. You'll mark the attendance either at the beginning or at the end of the session, depending on when you manage your billing. So to mark the attendance, all you have to do is click on that session and then from the attendance options, choose the one that applies. So we've marked that session for Benjamin attended. And it's very quick and easy to do that. So marking attendance actually segues into our billing process in OWL. So when you bill clients, OWL allows you to create an invoice and a receipt for each session. The invoice is that itemized record of the session details and the receipt is your proof of payment. So that billing workflow is a two-step process creating the invoice to show that the client owes you money, and then creating a receipt to show that the client has paid you for the session. So when we marked the attendance, we actually completed that first step of creating the invoice, because by default, all of your clients are set up on auto invoice payment terms. What that means is that we generate that invoice for you, so you don't have to spend the time creating it. If you do have clients that you need to bill manually though, because you bill them on a quarterly or a monthly basis, you can set them up on bill manually payment terms and create their invoices for a number of sessions as needed. But by default, they're on auto invoice, which is quick, easy invoicing. So I can click on that session and hover over payment actions here to view that invoice that we created when we marked attendance. And you'll see this is what the invoice will look like. You'll notice that it has the client information, about that session, as well as your header information and a logo. So it's a really sleek looking document. It also includes your therapist signature with your credentials if needed. So it's a very sleek looking document that neatly displays what the session is for and the amount charged. When we create the invoice automatically, it's important to know that we don't automatically send them to your clients. You still have the option to send the invoices whenever and however you'd like. We give you three options for sending them to your clients. So you can print a paper version of the invoice if you'd like, you can generate a PDF copy and email separately, or you can email from directly within OWL. So if the client has an email on file, you can select their email and then choose that option and send the email automatically. So it's really streamlined in terms of that billing process. So when we're ready to record payment for the session, we'll follow similar steps. We'll actually just click on the session and then under payment actions, 
we can record payment. That'll open the record payment window, which will pre-populate the amount owed and allow me to select a payment method. I can also input a confirmation number or an additional message if there's supporting information that I want to relate to this payment. But again, all you need to do is set the amount and the payment method type, and then you can click record payment. That'll generate your receipt automatically. And the receipt looks a lot like the invoice, but it'll show you what the payment was for that day and the method, and it'll update your balance owing for the client. And you'll see you have the same options for sending that receipt to the client as you do with the invoice, printing, PDFing, or emailing a version of it. And you'll see that's it. Those are the basics of invoicing and receiving your clients within OWL. So you can schedule an appointment, mark the attendance, view that invoice and send it, and then you can record a payment to generate the receipt. I'm gonna take you into the client account now while we're talking about finances to show you a couple of other financial things we allow you to do within OWL. So if I go into the client record and I go to the finances section, you'll see here we do keep a comprehensive history of all of the receipts and all of the invoices for your client. So you always have a full history of their financial standing with the practice. If you have a charge you'd like to put on the account that doesn't relate to a calendar session, you can use non-session charges to do that. So this tab here, I can just click non-session charge and then the plus icon, and I can type up any kind of charge I'd like. So it's really helpful for report charges, any administrative fees, um, perhaps you have supplementary materials that you sell that coincide with your services like workbooks, or informational resources, you could bring those up as a separate charge. So I'm gonna say here today that we have a paperwork fee that we're charging because my client has requested some printouts and that fee is $3. So I can just create that charge and then it generates a balance owing on the account. So that's my charge not related to a calendar session. So you can bring those up anytime you need to. We also give you the ability to pull an account summary for your client. So you'll see over in the sidebar here, the account summary is a record of all the sessions and non-session charges within a period of time defined by you. So I can choose the date range that I wanna start with for my summary and the end period as well, and then generate a version of that summary. And so you'll see here itemized all of those sessions and non-session charges, and if I keep scrolling, you'll see this is a large one. Um, you'll see the ultimate balance owing for that account at the end of it. So this is really great when your clients request a statement of their account. You can choose the date range and pull that statement to show them where their standing is. And you have the same options for sending this document as well, printing, PDFing, and emailing. We make it very easy to do all of that in OWL. So, now that the session has been attended and billed, the last thing you'll want to do is write up any of your session notes. So there are a couple of ways that you can write session notes in OWL. You can write them from the calendar by clicking on that session we booked directly. You can write them from in the client's account, or you can write them from our workflow section. Regardless of where you write them, the notes editor and functionality is the same in each area. So I'm gonna navigate here to the session and notes tab, and you'll see an itemized list of all of the sessions this client has attended and whether or not a note has been created or if there's a signed note existing. And I can create that note anytime I want to. Let me just show you here um, from the calendar. If I click on this session here, I also have the create note option. So as I mentioned, I can click that option to write my note in direct relation to that session. So what we're going to do is start writing a note and we'll use the notes editor with all of its rich text formatting options to write that note. I can start typing the contents of my note. I can also use a template. So we allow you to create templates. So you can see here, I can choose my session note template and I can add that to the end of a note I've started writing or I can add it to the beginning. Um, I'm going to use this template and you'll see here, I can start filling out the contents of my note based on that template. So it unifies the notes that I write for my clients. If you have any 
documents from your client that you'd like to tie to the note. So say they submitted homework um, in a different format. You can actually upload that to the note or you can upload it to the document section of their account and then associate it to the note later by just choosing associate and selecting a document. You'll notice too that as you're writing notes, we auto save every 60 seconds to create a revision history, but you have the option to save your note as you go every time as well. And you can see here from the revision history, we show a detailed log of all of the changes that are happening with that note to maintain compliance within your notes. So that's how you'd write up a note. Once you're finished writing the note, we give you the option to sign it as well. So you can click the sign button here and it'll automatically apply your digital signature to the note with your credentials and a date and timestamp. So once you've done this, you signify that the note is complete and that no more edits can be made to that note. If for some reason you did need to make a change to a note that's already been signed, you can unsign the note, but doing so will remove that date and timestamp from the original signing. So if I unsign my note, it'll remove that signature and it'll open this note up again so I can type more details, I can save those details, and then reapply my signature. When I do that, a new date and timestamp is created based on that signing of the note. And for compliance reasons, we don't allow backdating of the signature. We keep it consistent with when that action happened. So once you're done with your note writing, you can export and print singular versions of a note if needed. You can also pull a notes export. So I'm gonna close out of here and go back to the client's account. So we'll take a look at Benjamin here. And from the sessions and notes tab, if I need to, I can do a notes export. And what that'll allow me to do is pull a set of notes from that client record for any date range that I choose. And I also have the option to include non-session notes. So non-session notes are exactly like the non-session charges. If I have an ad hoc note I need to take for that client account, I can create a note anytime. So I just come to non-session notes, create that note and start writing it up using my templates and applying my signature, the same as I did for my session note. It's really great if you have interactions with that client that you wanna take note of outside of a session. So if you did a phone call or if you had um, another interaction outside of session that was scheduled, you'd create that note. So when you do your export, you can choose to include the session-based notes or the non-session notes, and this will pull a CSV of all of those notes neatly itemized for that date range to your computer. So it's easy to get that data anytime. While we're in the client account, I'll also rock, rock you through some of the other ways that we store information for the client account. So we talked about the session and notes section as well as finances. Let's walk through contact and clinical. This is all of the uh, main information about the client and how we store it. We break it out into a couple of different sections for neat organization of that data. So the first section here is your contact details where you'll see basic information like first name, last name, birth date, address. This is also where you can set up any of your confirmations for appointments and email or text reminders. So we actually allow you to set up reminders for clients who have emails or phone numbers on file about their appointments by a set period of time out of that appointment. So for instance, you could send a notification four hours by text before the appointment starts to remind your client. It's really helpful and it takes a lot of administrative effort off of your team trying to remember who needs a reminder and when they need it and creating, you know, really advanced schedules of sending reminders. The clinical details section here is where you would store information about your client from a high level. So diagnoses or clinical comments that you need to be aware of. The circle of care section here this is really great because it's a dynamic contact information storage place in OWL. So from here, it's very beneficial for therapists who do couples, group, or family sessions, or have clients with extensive contact networks. Within the circle of care, you can organize all of your contacts and their information, and you can show contacts who you need to know in relation to that client account, 
versus other clients who are linked to this client who you also see for treatment. So I can click into their record if needed. So looking at this record here, I can see Beth is set up as Benjamin's lawyer, but she's not a client of my practice, whereas Fern is one of Benjamin's dependents, and they may come in for therapy together. So by linking their accounts, I make scheduling those sessions with the two of them easy by connecting the two of them and then storing that session information for both accounts. So you have that option of adding a contact or adding a linked account. The account details section allows you to set up discounts for your clients as well as manage the billing status. So like we talked about earlier, for clients who might be on auto invoice or bill manually payment terms, this is where you would set that up. Service discounts allow you to set a rate specific to that client that might differ from your standard service offering in terms of price. So it's really helpful you can create that distinction for people who need it, depending on their circumstances. I'll point out that we also have a logs feature in the client account that's really helpful. We keep track of all of the communications sent from within OWL to your client and allow you to see the status of those items. So I can see when a form was sent to my client or a receipt or an appointment confirmation. I can hover over that message to see the content of the message as well. So it's really helpful to reference this section if your client ever says, I didn't receive that notification. You can come here and check to find out. Last but not least, in the client account, we also give you the option to do client-based to-dos. So you'll notice in the top corner here, this green one icon, I can click on this to create a to-do list of items that I need to remind myself of within relation to this client. So if I wanted to log that I need to give them a phone call, or if I need to write up a report, I can assign myself a to-do based on a date, and maybe this one is due next week, and I can just keep an ongoing list of reminders within that client. It's sort of our virtual way of keeping a sticky note of all those things you want to do within the client file. And you can just check those items off the list as you go. So the final two sections of OWL that we're going to discuss today are tools focused on helping you with the practice management aspect of your clinic. The workflow section here, you'll notice this is one of our most beloved features because it's a series of continually updating lists of all the open administrative tasks and actions that need your attention. The workflow ensures that none of that administrative work goes missing or gets forgotten. So we're talking about creating invoices, marking attendance on sessions, and writing your notes. All of those actions that I showed you that need your attention are stored here so you can work through them in workflow. So you can see all the sessions I need to mark my attendance or invoices I need to create. And I can action these items right from within the workflow section. So it's really, really helpful. And we recommend that when you start using OWL, you check in the workflow section daily to follow through on all of the tasks that need to be completed. And you can just work through the lists there. We also compile, like I mentioned, those client to-dos. So you can see those to-dos across all of your clients. So you don't have to jump from client file to client file. You can use this section to get a lot of work done. And it's really helpful to have. The next section I'll show you here, and last, is the dashboard. So this area is where you'll find all of the statistics and practice data for your account. You'll notice when you first come in, we're viewing a year-over-year -year comparison for the current year and the past year based on total sessions and revenue. So this gives you a really good sense of growth for your practice as a whole, which is helpful to have. And then we dive into an analysis between the two. It's really great statistical data. We also have a stat section, which generates visual reports based on certain data in your account. And you can choose to show these reports for any date range you'd like. We also call out the total for that period, along with projected total based on other upcoming items booked in your calendar. So you can see based on sessions, fee percentages, revenue, attendance. We have all these great reports that give you really meaningful data about how your practice is doing. You may not have insight into this sort of data if you're using a combination of systems to run your practice or if you're still running a lot of your processes off of paper or segmented calendars. So it's really great insightful information that you can get here. 
Lastly, we have the data export section. So this feature has a whole bunch of reports based on all of the data stored in OWL, and you can pull them anytime. Again, based on any date range of your choosing. So you'll see here we have sessions, payments, accounting exports, all kinds of information that you can pull anytime. And you can use our helpful filters at the top of the page to choose your date range. So by clicking last month, I've preset all of the filters to that day, and then I can just pull my reports. When I pull a copy of that report, it'll be exported as a CSV file type, which you can open with Excel, Numbers, or any other data programs you like to use. So it's really easy to get all of that data that's stored in OWL. It's right at your fingertips. All right, so that takes us through our review of OWL practice for today. Thanks everyone for taking the time to join me in that tour. As I mentioned earlier, we'll follow up this webinar by sending you a few helpful resources for your further consideration. So we'll send each of you a recorded tour video walking you through everything we discussed today. And we'll send you a link to our resource center, which has a lot of great getting started guides and answers to any questions you may have. As I mentioned, you can experience everything we've shown you today firsthand in your very own OWL account by signing up for a free trial. It's really easy to sign up, just go to owlpractice.ca and click the free trial button to create your own account. If you are ready to get started with Owl Practice now, you can send an email to support at owlpractice.ca anytime and our customer advocate team will be ready to get started with you. Before we wrap up though, I mentioned we will have a question period to address any remaining questions from the session that we had today. So I'm just gonna take a look at the chat session that our advocates, Teela and Safina, have been moderating and see what kind of questions we have. So it looks like Philip asked a question about exporting a file format usable for QuickBooks. And Safina answered that. The exports do go into a CSV format, which is compatible with QuickBooks. So that's great. And is uh, Sherrit still here? You wanted to be made the presenter of the session. Um, I'm not sure if you had issues viewing the session today, but if you did, we can send you that recorded version of the webinar so you can see everything that we did. I'm just gonna check the list to see if you're still here with us. Um, Sherrit, any other questions about what you experienced today? Please feel free to type them right into the chat section. Uh, Philip, I see your comment there. This looks really good. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we have lots of information online. We'll follow up with you um, separately to answer any questions that you have. It doesn't look like there are any other questions incoming, but I'll wait another minute or two in case there are a few last minute questions just before we close out. I will also mention for everyone's reference, at the very beginning of the session, for anyone who might have joined after the fact, we will be offering a promotion for all of our webinar attendees for one month free of OWL. So if you're interested in moving forward, just let us know that you attended the webinar and we can set that up for your subscription.